All right, today's Friday, November 22nd, 2019. Cowling is completed. Uh, took a lot of time. I built this cowling by scratch. So I fitted all the panels, started with poster board, and then uh, just used those as templates to, to create the cowling pieces. The top cowl is 0.032 aluminum. Everything else is 0.025. So uh, the top cowl is really the, the basis for, start. well, actually the basis is the nose bowl and getting your channels from the nose bowl back to the firewall and then you start the cowling with the top piece uh, cut a cut an access door in there for the oil uh, then i did the bottom piece and then finally the doors so we'll walk around here in a minute and i'll show you all the things that we've done with that uh it just was slow like everything else time consuming um, for example there's a lip down here at the bottom uh, at the entrance of the tunnel, which is used to kind of create a, uh, a a low pressure area to pull air out of the cowling. The air is going through the air inlets here and exiting through the bottom here. And that little lip kind of creates a little bit of a vacuum so that it's pulling air out. Well, I used, uh, started with aluminum and I tried, I had four iterations before I finally completed. I, I used also some, some poster board templates to do that. But uh, you know, it, it, the, the challenge with this is that while I can make a lip and I can get a little bit of a 30 degree slant, it not only does it curve in, but it also curves up. So what happened was with the aluminum pieces, I've got pretty much a straight, it, it flattens the bottom of the cowl while the cowl itself is rounded all the way through when when this is installed it's it's rounded and then flattened and then rounded again and that caused a problem for conflicting with the fuel controller the fuel servo uh, it would flatten push that cowl up to the point where the servo was hitting so I, you know, I did, I did three of them. I tried as best I could with all of these. Um, just couldn't get it right. And then finally resorted to just fiberglass. Took a piece of poster board again at the opening and just laid down two plies of fiberglass and it fit right into that, that basin or that bottom portion of the cowl and then the lip on down. And then I just made it really large. Uh, I layered, I think three or four more plies of fiberglass into that and then I could just cut it down and form it so what I thought was going to be a, a, a two hour job turned out to be about a week or more so that was the challenge itself speaking of the fuel controller my system's a little different uh, in that it begins with normally the fuel controller mounts just think think about this elbow is not here and this fuel controller normally mounts in this fashion and then you have an air induction system here that picks up the air and brings it into the engine in my case i bought the 95 degree elbow from airflow performance 95 degrees so that it actually tilted up an extra five degrees towards the front of the nose bowl well first time i mounted it uh I mounted this elbow and the controller together and it was it was interfering with the, the sump these these uh, uh, bolt heads here were interfering with the sump so I sent it over to airflow performance they created this phenolic spacer it's about a three inch phenolic spacer and uh, that pushed the controller out a little bit further so that my I had clearance in here I also had them clock this uh, this valve here uh, because it was actually pushing, it was pointed this direction and my fuel line was hitting the sump. So they, they turned it, they rotated it about five to 10 degrees over. And so this is what the fuel controller is gonna look like. It's a forward facing fuel controller now so that I can basically have a ram air inlet on, my, uh, on, the, on, my, on the front of the airplane. Here's what the air box looks like that will mount to the front of that controller. And I'll talk about that here. So I ordered this from, I'm not sure this is the final, this is where I'm gonna go ultimately with this. I'm not entirely sure, but this will, will work and it will function for now. Uh, I probably will improve it over time. 
So this actually came from J James Aircraft. Uh, I bought this and then I had to do a lot of modifying. If you look at the bottom, I had to flatten it because again, the, the roundness, the roundness of the, of the air box was conflicting with the bottom of the cowl. So I had to flatten it here and I also had to flatten it here so that I had clearance with my cowling. Um, I actually had to create this backing piece myself and I had to fashion the alt air door spring loaded so there'll be a, a cable in the cockpit that will essentially pull to open the alt air and the spring the spring just holds it shut and then pressure inside will also hold that door shut so you can look at the in, inside here you can see the there's a conical k and n filter there the front for so what, when i walk around i'll show the ram inlet and the ram and the way i've been i can make the connection from the nose bowl into the air box uh, is with a piece of round three inch aluminum tube it's actually a sleeve that slides inside here there's a little shoulder inside so it only goes in about three quarters of an inch and then that sleeve goes out to the outside of the of the ram inlet and it's it's really the piece that will connect these two or make the coupling between the, the front of the nose bowl and this air box and that's uh, I've embedded nut plates in there I'll show you here in a second I embedded these nut plates so that I could actually secure that metal tube um, in place and so it won't come loose my only concern about it is it's not a flexible connection it's a, it's it's almost a rigid connection uh, although once that tube slides into here it's just a friction fit. It's not, I'm not screwing anything here. So there is a little bit of, of give, give here in flexing because this cowling will rise and fall slightly, but not, not nothing big, but um, eighth of an inch, maybe quarter inch at the most. So you're gonna have some bit of movement here. So it is somewhat of a rigid connection. Uh, I would have liked to have tried to make it uh, a little bit more of a flexible. I've looked at skeet tube and other things. There's just not enough room. Uh, I know others have managed to get it, have managed to accomplish that. I just wasn't. But let me talk about these doors on this cowling. These are the Piper type of latches that you see on a lot of Cubs, Super Cubs, Pacers. I wanted this because the I wanted these this style of latches because I wanted my cow doors when they come down to actually get to pull to get a little bit of a a grip and to, and to bring them in tight so there wouldn't be any flexing or wobbling I just I just wasn't comfortable with creating a door and then just having a fastener I know people have done it and I know they've done it successfully um, I like this retro look I like this old style I think it kind of fits the, the the whole utilitarian aspect of the airplane and I like the function of how both of those just kind of pull down and secure that cow door down so let me go around and open everything up and then we'll do a walk around. Okay, so the cow doors are open. I think they look pretty cool like that actually. Both of them are secured with a, a prop rod, cow door prop rod made out of one quarter inch uh, round steel. And I actually used the baffling to secure uh, the bottom piece of the of the rod here in this angle kind of helps to lock it in so it doesn't go anywhere um, the top of the rod is secured here with a piece of angle with a little bronze brass bushing there and then when not in use you just swing it over to here and latch it in right there all right taking a look at the uh, lip I was referring to earlier that I made out of fiberglass uh, it came out pretty decent I think I'm gonna have to do a little more sanding on it and kind of even it out a little bit but it's gonna work out real nice I think once it's painted it'll it'll really look good um, so you can get an idea of what the exit looks like here at the back of the cowl the, the dual exhaust coming out on each side uh, the veteran exhaust the bottom cowl itself is integrated uh, into the, the channels here at the top 
and the nose bowl, the bottom half of the nose bowl. So that'll be all one piece. So when we remove the bottom cowl, uh, this will all come off together and it'll retain its shape uh, and should come back together fairly easily. Uh, you can also take a look at the inside here where that fairing or that lip is. Um, looking at the front, here's the air inlet I was telling you about. Uh, you can see here, this is the three inch piece of tube I was referring to. That's, that's what's going to slide into that air box and you can see how it's been installed here on the front. Uh, this was just built up of fiberglass and resin, um, a lot of filler and a lot of sanding. But overall, um, I think it's going to look pretty nice and it, you can see how if you look right down the center here, the box that generally goes here is eliminated and you can see that lip that at the exit of the cow door, not the cow door, but the bottom of the cowling there, the tunnel. Got a little more sanding to do to kind of make that a little more rounded and symmetrical. Uh, we've looked at the inlets in the, for the air flow into the cowling before, but this is the other door. And uh, same situation here, just use a piece of quarter inch rod. Uh, doubled up some angles here, put a bronze bushing in there and then created a little retaining clip for that to lock, latch into. Other than that, not a lot to talk about on this video. So one thing I wanted to talk about as all of this was going on with the cowling, um, you know, I had some things done on the side and one of those things was um, people were asking me questions about my control cables with this 30 degree tilted panel and my controls are going to be at a 30 degree and that's going to be kind of an issue and I've always never uh, assumed that my controls would be in that position. I would have to come up with something to level them out to make them more in line with the seating profile, kind of a right angle to your body as it's sitting in the airplane um, and in the seat itself. And so lots of thinking that goes on with that. Um, but what I came up with was, came up with this piece, which will mount uh, onto the panel here and you can see how the back where the control cables those holes will be cut out the same size here and that way the controls can be mounted to this piece and then the piece itself will be mounted onto the panel with these holes and probably some strong epoxy glue the way i came up with this was i first used uh, again poster board and a block of wood and sanded it down to get what i wanted um, but how, you know, but once I did that, how was I going to have this piece made? Well, I went around to some uh, uh, machine shops and thought maybe somebody had a CNC machine that could do this. They were extremely expensive for a one-off like this. They, they, it would have taken a lot of setup for their machine to just produce one piece like this. So I did a little research and I learned that there are some companies online that actually do uh, machine shop work one-off type of stuff and I came across a company called Xometry and Xometry takes CAD drawings well I didn't have any way to draw CAD but then I remembered that with my EAA subscription I have access to a free CAD designing software program called SolidWorks uh, and so I downloaded SolidWorks from the EAA website with my EAA membership and taught myself how to use SolidWorks and fashioned a CAD drawing that would work for this, uh, sent it off, and in about two weeks it came back and it was a completely, I think it came out just beautiful. I was thinking about maybe painting this before I got it. I thought, well, I'll have to paint it or cover it. Maybe I'll cover it in fi carbon fiber or something like that. But I like the way it came out. Uh, it's, it's a nice piece of brushed uh, anodized aluminum and I think it'll look nice on the uh, instrument panel. So I was re really happy with that. So that's probably it right now. I don't have anything else to talk about. It's just been a lot of uh, sheet metal work the past few days, uh, bending and cutting and riveting and shaping. And uh, you know, the hinges, I'll show you here, the hinges uh, were installed onto that top piece there. And uh, this is an extruded hinge. So uh, 
it's got a lot of structural integrity. Um, I added a little bend on the piano hinge wire here uh, so that when I want to remove these doors, I can just pull that out straight, straight out through there and install them back again later on. It's kind of a tedious thing, but it does allow the doors to be removed for any sort of work. So anyway, that's it. That's all I have for now. Um, just wanted to do a quick bear hawk update video. And uh, if you like what you see, please click the like button and share with people and tell people all about the bear hawk. Thanks guys.